Um, today for practice, Garnett will be out um, with his thumb. Um, Staley will be out vet day. And then we got Pierre and, and Ruben both be limited. Go ahead. No, no, he, uh, yeah, he had a uh, tendon repaired over the break and um, just need to give a couple more days to heal up. Is Marquise back with the team? Yes, yeah, Marquise here today. You, you sent your, your guys uh, into the bye with a, a stern message about what you wanted to see from, from the last six weeks. Have you been able to kind of see that, that focus on Monday and, and today when they, they've come back? Oh, uh, yeah, generally over my career, the first practice back from bye week is usually the worst one of the year. Um, guys are just rusty and been away for a while. That wasn't the case this year. Um, guys came back. It wasn't the perfect practice, but uh, they came back. It seemed a little rejuvenated from the break. Um, always a little rusty when you take um, four or five days off. Um, but they practiced hard, were upbeat, and they came in today locked in too. So I was excited about the, the aura they had. Kyle Yusek said the other day that uh, the message you gave to the team was kind of what the emotions you went through during your bye week. Can you kind of just take us through what your week was like in terms of how you, you know, self-scouted and reflected on what happened first? Uh, yeah, you, I mean, you get on a bye week and you got time, and the first thing is you think about is um, the last game you played in. Um, that's why bye weeks and Thursday night games can be great when you win because it's kind of the only time you get a, you don't, you can, you can enjoy it more than one day, um, but it also is a lot worse if you lose because you got to think about it for a while. So um, took a couple of days just thinking about the the Giants game and how it ended, and then you start to move on, enjoy your family a little bit, and but then you get to see football over the weekend, which is sometimes fun to watch, but uh, then you end up getting worked worked up because you're pissed you you're not you're not in that right now. Um, I know we're not totally eliminated mathematically, but uh, it definitely gets you worked up when you're watching other teams and stuff, knowing that you're going to go back and you want to be a part of that um, but you go through that kind of through the whole day just watching other people on Sundays and um, then really when I came in on Monday saw the guys talked to the coaches um, very excited to be back and not just to say that but also you know we got six games here it's just all about football um, it's nothing else and there's a lot on the line and that's stuff I talked about last week that's stuff that is obvious everyone knows that but um, to state it to guys and just make people aware because you don't want to assume uh, you never assume that everyone knows what you're talking about and there's always guys you got to let them know what the deal is in this league and um, you come back and people might think you not have much to play for you have everything to play for you have your career uh, you have your livelihood you have the guys next to you and you have um, showing people you want to be in this building so um, when you start to think of that you think of all the challenges ahead um, I'm excited to do it how in depth did you uh, spend time with Nick over the break and over the last I guess a few days to get him ready for his first road start. None. Yeah. <laughs> you you let that you let him get away. He's heard enough of me for the time being. He got four days away, I'm sure, with his wife, and uh, we saw him Monday, and which was gave us some extra time there, and he'll be with us all week. He's the kind of guy though that's probably not taking that time off. I'm imagining he was watching film and. Did he come in this week all? I'm sure he did. I mean, it's different now because, um, I mean, you got everything we want on an iPad, so you don't have to come into a building to work. Um, you know, you do to you usually work with other guys and stuff, but the whole point was to rest and get away. So I know Nick is watching film, studying, doing all that stuff, but um, I want those guys to get away because you, you get a lot of, you put a lot of work in in a week, and um, you get very exhausted when you do too much. Just given his uncertain future beyond the season, what, what do you think? Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Ward is going to put himself through these, these last six weeks. Same thing. Same thing as every other player. I mean, it's, it's not just guys in contract situations. It's every single person on our team, every coach on our team, um, everybody in this building. It's... Um, and it's not just a few people. So um, Jimmy's got a lot on the line, and so does everyone else. And Jimmy's been playing like it um, all year. You know, Jimmy did a good job for us at corner, and we made the move to safety. And I've um, been real excited about how he's been playing so far. But um, it's how you finish. What did you did you get a chance to watch that game on Monday? What do you make of a game on one of the high scoring games? And NFL history. Uh, it was fun to watch. Two good offenses. You kind of, ex I mean, I think everyone expected it to be high scoring um, with all that speed out there and the quarterbacks that are playing. Um, but yeah, it was fun to watch. I enjoyed it like everyone else. You have fond uh, football on Thanksgiving memories. Did you play turkey bowl growing up with your friends? Did you, have you coached on Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah, I've coached on, you know, our most fun game. I think I've only done it once, maybe twice. But the one I remember was the fun one. It was when we were at Washington at Dallas. Um, 
I think we were four and six at the time, and we ended up beating them pretty good and ended up winning out to finish 10 and six, go to the playoffs that year. So that was my best memory. And uh, But no, football my whole life is just, um, I mean, Thanksgiving my whole life, not just coaching is uh, coaching. I'm working the day and my family's mad at me when I get home because of how hungry they are and how long they've waited for the meal just for me to get there. Um, but that used to be me pissing my dad all day. And me and my mom, we'd watch football all day and then my dad gets home and we usually have Thanksgiving dinner. So it hasn't changed for me. You guys have uh, two interceptions. The, the Buccaneers have one. There are a handful of teams that have four. The numbers are low uh, there. Do you have any you know, explanation for, for why that might be this, this year? Um, I mean, that's... It's, it would take too long for me to talk about. There'd be too, way too many variables, but I think that's one of the reasons for both teams not having much success. Um, you know, you look, you know, they've struggled on, on defense definitely, you know, yards and points, and then when you don't get turnovers, it's it's hard to capitalize on how good their offense is done. I mean, there, there's a lot of good offenses in the league this year, and they're moving the ball um, better than anyone. So, um, But they also don't have many wins because of it because they're turning over and not getting them back. Um, we've been a little more middle of the pack in both, and um, it's gotten us chance in every game. Um, but our offense has got to score more. Our team's got to get more picks to get more wins. I think quarterback play is, is better this year or has been better in recent years than maybe at, at various points in, in time? Um, I don't think so. I mean, there's a number of good guys in this league, and um, the same ones, for the most part, are still playing at a high level, and there's a couple new ones coming up. Um, but no, I don't see much of a difference. Since they've been going kind of back and forth between Jameis and Fitzpatrick, do you watch, I mean, obviously, you watch both when you're preparing? Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you watch both, but, I mean, they both have very, they're both guys who, you know, I've seen a number of times over my career on when they've been on, when Fitz has been on different teams, and Jameis, I feel like, um, played every year of his career except last year. Um, both of them can play at a very high level. Um, I know they're going with Jameis this week, and uh, Jameis, you know, some of the plays he's made over his career are unbelievable. And I know he's been rusty at times this year, so, which all guys are when, um, you know, when they can't practice, they're out of a building for, I think, about a month of what it was. Uh, he's came back in. He always lets it rip. He always tries to make plays. Um, but he's been a, a little off in some games, which have led to some picks. Um, but he's come back in, and give him a chance to win some games. So uh, James is a guy that also when nothing's there, he's made some plays that I didn't think people can make. So he can be as good as, you, as, good as anyone in this league. And uh, that's why we got to play very well. With Kittle, uh, obviously he produced with, with Jimmy and then Jimmy goes out and he continues to produce with CJ and then, and then does it with Mullins. Do you learn anything about him just to, or to maybe confirm anything in your mind about the type of player in his future uh, that he can continue to do that no matter who's a quarterback? Uh, yeah, I never think of who's that quarterback to decide on the player. I know that affects stats and what they can do out there. Um, but I just I watch the guys every day. I watch how they run routes. I watch how they block. And then I watch how they play with injuries, how they try to get through it, how they take care of themselves. I mean, Kittle's been very similar since the day he's got here. Um, his his production has gone up and down to me based off of health, based off the of situations on how good we're doing around him. Um, but no, I think Kittle's been very good since we've gotten here. He's gradually gotten better because he works the right way, and I think that'll continue throughout his career. As dominant as he's been this year, he hasn't scored much, only a couple touchdowns. What do you think goes into that? Lots of things. I mean, thousands of things. Where, where did he get the ball? Um, where is he? What, what does he have in the red zone? I mean, there, there's lots of good players who, I mean, some years they'll score. I think Julio went about a year and a half without one, and then and he just went a month in a row. I don't think they just found out this secret deal. Um, I know one thing, usually the better guys on your team are harder to get the ball to because um, it's very easy, much easier to double guys down there and stuff like that. I'm not saying that's been Kittle's case all the time, but it is a lot of times. A couple more? Is that good? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.